Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and welcome to another episode of the Learning Free Cab for Beginners. We created this fan in the part workbench and now we're going to look at the similar workflow in the part design. Now it must be stressed there are multiple workflows of creating such a model in the part design and also in the part. We're going to be looking at quite a different workflow from the previous one. We're going to be using a clone workflow for this and there is a reason for this. And that's because of the array of additive and subtractive features and limitations of doing this with a Boolean at this time of speaking. We can do it with a subtractive or additive feature, but I'm going to show you the clone workflow for this one and also how to utilize that clone workflow to your best advantage, allowing to modify these blades just by editing one body. So I hope you're enjoying this channel. Hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So the part design workflow is somewhat different to the part workflow when creating this object. And one of the reasons being is that we can't have multiple bodies in there. So we have to be careful when we start arraying. Also, we've got different helix tools as well. So if I opened up my original fan, which I've done in the part workbench, and we'll break this down and delete some of the fusions and the cinders, etc. Let's delete the cylinder. This array won't actually work in the part design because it creates a multi-body object. Part design doesn't allow multi-body objects. They have to be connected together, so we have to be careful of that. So this creates a much different workflow. So let's get into that workflow now. Let's close this fan. Close all. And we'll create a new document come over to the part design workbench and we're going to create our first body, which is going to be the blade. It's going to be the same. So create a body, create a sketch, we're going to look on the X, Y plane, looking down on that. And we're going to use this quadrant here because we're building three blades and we're going to span them across that circle. So they're nice and even. First of all, let's create our circle. And this may not be the same dimensions as what we had before. So this one is going to be a radius of 20 millimeters. We need another circle, which is going to be the radius of 100 millimeters. And this is the start of our fan blade. So now we need some lines which connect up and using a slightly different workflow here i'm using a subtractive workflow so i'm going to create the lines and connect those up previously i created these with arcs and then we can create the trim between these so i'm going to trim away all these these two just leaving those there so we've got our arc and our lines. They're not connected, so I'm going to take this point and this line, point on object constraint, and do the same with this point and this line, point on object constraint. And we just trim using the trim tool, trim away this circle here. So we've got this. So that was a different way of doing it in the part workflow. We used arcs. Totally up to you. I use the subtractive method of creating this shape. So now I'm going to hit escape to get the mouse pointer back and add the fillets between these two. And the same on this side, this side, and this side. And we'll set one side, this side, add a radius of about 20 millimeters, and this side, add a radius of about 15. So we've got our fan blade. Let's close that. And now in our model, we'll have a body with a sketch within here. I'm going to right click and rename that 
to fan blade. We haven't padded this. We're going to now create a profile to subtract this away. So let's create a new body and within a new sketch. This time I'm going to create a side profile along the XZ plane. Now the reason why we do this is because we've got to add some thickness. We have to create that thickness within our sketch. Let's pull in some geometry. So I'm going to use this point here, but we won't be able to pull that in because it comes from another body. I can close out. Because the new body is active, the one that we're creating this profile in, means that I can come into the fan blade, have a little fan blade here, and create a sub shape binder. So on this point or this line, and use the subject binder or part design, create such a binder. And that brings that binder in here. So it's creating a link between these two. So I can reference the geometry in here. Let's go back into this sketch. And first of all, I'm going to come into the model, click on this sketch here, and press the space bar so we don't get confused. That hides the sketch, but we still can see our binders in there. Now let's use the import geometry tool and find that point so we can see it just there on that line that point just there and the actual line the subject binder runs this way let's just pull that in anyway so we've got that there so we're going to create our profile now it's up to you what you want to use we could use the slot we could use a rectangle and i'm just going to go for a standard rectangle let's come in and create our shape now i've created the shape here I'm going to use these two points and this point and make them symmetrical. And we're we'll setting distance. So this distance is going to be the radius. Now, if we think about it, we've got 20 millimeters from here. So we can set this to 80, like so. Set some height. Three mil. So we have that there. Now, if I come into the fan blade and look at the sketch and see that this actually encapsulates all of this blade. So what's going to happen is we're going to sweep this along a helix this way and do a common workflow. So do an intersection between our sweep and our padded blade. So we're just looking to make sure that's in place. That's all good. Let's go to tasks and hit close. And what I'm going to do is rename this body. Right click, rename. I'm going to call this the sweep body. So now we've got our profile. We've got the binder, which we're going to press the space bar on to just do make it invisible because we don't need that. I'm going to use this profile, so the profile sketch. Let's rename that to profile with the additive helix. Now we've got to think about the height of this blade as well. And I'm going to go for 15 millimeters. So when this connects up, we're going to have a 15 millimeter connector in here. The reason why we've got to think about the height is because the helix is going to ask us about the height. So click profile sketch and click the additive helix. Let's cancel that and show you where that is in the menu. So profile, part design, it's a additive feature and additive helix. So as you can see at the moment, we've got a helix that, well, it's way too high. Come over to the left, let's change the mode. So we've got pitch high angle. I want to deal with the height and the turns. The reason why I want to deal with the height and the turns is because I know the height of my blades is going to be 15 millimeters. And I know the turns is going to be basically one of those quadrants or near enough. So let's go height and turns, height, 15 millimeters. Now the turns at the moment, it's three turns. We want it one single quadrant. So this is a percentage or a fraction. 
so 0.25. Might have to go a little bit more to encapsulate that blade. And we have that there. So you can see that's actually created that helix there. And it's almost, by the looks of it, the same as that blade. We just haven't got the fulleton in here. Now we could, say, fillet these edges and create this blade if we wanted to. So that's another way of doing it. But we're going to go along the same workflow as that we used in the part workbench and pad this up and create an intersection. So let's close that by hitting OK. And we've got our helix all ready to go. I'm going to come into the fan blade now. And what I'm going to do is right click and toggle the active body because I'm going to deal with this sketch. If I try to pad this without the active body toggled, let's toggle the active body on the other one. So this one is active now. And come into the fan blade and click on the sketch and hit the pad. It's saying, well, we can't do it because the body's not active. Let's hit OK. Click on the fan blade, right click, toggle active body. It will show in bold. Now click on the sketch and create the pad. See it's padding upwards. We can create this as symmetrical. So we're looking to cover this whole sweep. So when we're strewed up, if I strewed up say 15 millimeters, then it's not going to cover that because we've got this symmetrical to plane. So we need to keep going now. I'm just going to place it in here 60 just to make sure that we cover all of this sweep. Don't worry about the edges because we're dealing with those within the intersection. So now that's encapsulated, we can see it's basically really nice and hugging this shape. Let's hit OK. But we don't have to worry about how close a fit this is because we're going to do an intersection. As long as we cover the pad with the sweep, we should be okay. So it's coming out the top, coming out the bottom, and we're all good to go. Now, it shouldn't matter which way around we have these when we do our boolean. Just make sure nothing's selected and create the boolean. Click Add Body. The active body is made invisible. Click Add Body and click the current body that you see on screen. At the moment, the fused, drop this down and go common. So we've created our blade, like so. So we've got that there with a Boolean workflow. Let's hit OK. So we have the Boolean blade in there inside the fan blade, this one here. So we've got our blade. But we need to rotate this and clone this in some kind of raying or cloning workflow to create the additional blades that are going to go around the center. Before we go ahead, let's save our project. So file, save as. I'm going to call this part design fan and save that. Now for the eagled eye of you, you can see a problem here in that we've got this check mark. If I come out to edit, refresh, we get this dependency error and the document contains dependency cycles. If I hit yes, then that still needs recompution. Why is this? Well, it's all to do with, if I come into the actual sweep and I've got this binder here, it's all to do with this subshape binder, this one here. We created a binder between the sketch and the sweep body, this one here. And that pulled in that binder, binding the sketch into the new body. We then create a boolean, which basically places the sweep body inside the fan body. So we've got a connection from the fan body to the sweep body, then back again with the boolean. And that creates that circle dependency there. How do we solve it? It is actually quite simple in that, well, with the booleans, if we're taking it from another body, then the binder will cause this because it's created this dependency, this circular dependency. We can delete that binder because we don't need it anymore. I know it's got a reference to the following sketch, sketch 001. Yes, then that dependency disappears. 
and I can double click the profile. And all we use that binder is to make sure that this was this distance away. And well, we just need to add some distance in here between these two points. Place a distance of 20 millimeters. And we'll add another constraint between these two and make them symmetrical. So that solves that issue there. We've got no dependency, we've got no recompution that will just keep on going round and round and round. We'll never fulfill the recompute. I'll be doing a video about that in the future and the tools that you can use to find those types of errors. So we've got the part design fan blade. We need to array this in a circle. Now we can't use the polar array well because let's cancel out and come into the one that I want to polar array with this boolean. If I try to use the polar array and we'll place it in the fan body, it's going to not allow us to do this because it can only transform additive or subtractive features. There is another solution. Well, there's multiple solutions. We're going to go down a clone workflow. So the one I want to clone is basically this fan body. And we're going to clone this twice. Click on the fan body, come up to the part design and create a clone and we're going to do it again so we've got this body here and you can see if i highlight that it's actually sitting on top of that one or within it so click on the fan body again part design create a clone or we use the sheep icon on the toolbar that's create a clone of that body so anything that changes within the fan body will change within the clone and that comes in handy when we had the fillets so now we've got those fan blades, then we can manipulate them in 3D space. So we can click on one of the bodies, come down to the placement and come down to the angle. We're working in 45 degree sections. We need to figure out the placement of these blades, well, the rotation of these blades. So if we pull up our calculator, if we think of we've got 45 degrees of blade and we've got three blades, so we've got 135 degrees taken up by the blades, we have 360 degree rotation minus 135 leaves us 225 of basically blank space. We divide that by three to get the placement of the blades, the space in between, that's 75 degrees. So I can place these by taking the first one, place it at an angle of 45 degrees, and then plus the 75 onto that. So we can just do some maths in here and hit enter. 120. Let's take our next one. So this one will be 45 times 2. Hit enter, so 90 degrees. And then we plus the 75 times 2. So plus 75. And once more, plus 75. And that gets us into the position that we want. So we have our fan blades. Now we need a center part to combine these all together. So we look at the top, we can see this circle in here. So we need to create our 20 millimeters of radius in there. And we're gonna do that in a new body. So this is the connection part. So let's create a new body, create a new body. And let's just rename these. And we'll rename this one to connection point. So now we've got that connection point. Let's create something in here. Now we can do this with a sketch. I'm going to use an additive primitive. So these here, the yellow ones, which are additive, red are subtractive. And I'm going to just use an additive cylinder in here. Or we can come up to part design. Create an additive primitive and additive cylinder. That's added the cylinder to there. The height, well, this is going to be 15, but we need to add on, say, three millimeters for the profile width, so 18 mil there. The radius, I set this to 20. And we can see what we've got in here. So we've got those added in here. And if we zoom in, we can see that, well, we need to bring this down so 
this cylinder needs to move down so it attaches up to the top or is in line with this top. Now if we look down we can see the attachment and it's saying selecting. We haven't actually selected anything in there, I haven't selected anything. And what I want to do is select the top plane. So this XY plane, if I click on that, you can see the plane XY plane has been selected. It's placed it upon that plane. Therefore, that will open up these attachment offsets. These will be disabled. And I can move this in the Z direction. So if I come in and try not to select anything from the screen, otherwise your cylinder will be attached to it. And well, what we have to do is click on this plane again. So let's do that. If I select that, you can see, well, I've attached it now to the plane. So what we do is just delete these out, highlight them, delete them, and we're back to reference one. Click reference one, so it's saying selecting, and that's select the plane again, so this one. Your attachments become active, and we can move this in the Z direction. And we'll move this down until it's in line with the top. So minus 1.5 and click off. And you can see, well, that's more or less at the top. And if we look down the bottom, it's connected to the bottom now. So it's all okay. So we come up to the top, hit okay. And now we've got the fan and the connection point. Now at this point, we can create a sketch of our pond here new sketch along that cylinder and add a connection. Let's just place a circle in there, hit close and then pocket that, go through all and okay. So just done a quick hole through that. These are at the moment individual parts and we're going to boolean these all together. We need an active body so we must make sure that when we do booleans that nothing's selected. So just click on some blank space. The connection point is the active body, it's in bold. So that will be made invisible when I use a Boolean. So go out to part design, Boolean operations, see it vanishes and we can click add body and click this blade. And then move around and click in add body. Notice the blade disappears, this blade. Add body once more. Last blade, click that. We've got fuse selected, so they will fuse together. And we hit OK. Now what we have is that if I collapse all these up, we have this Boolean inside here. And we created a fan using a part design workflow, which involves cloning and rotating the blades and using a Boolean fuse with the individual bodies. So before we go, let's show you a little tip regarding the clone workflow. And this was in one of the previous Learning Free Cab for Beginners tutorials. We've used clones in there, and the Boolean is basically we've taken the original and the clones and Booleans together. We can be a little bit more clever about this. Let's just delete that Boolean to release those blades. And we've got the fan blades. Now there's one missing because the Boolean isn't shown, so press the spacebar on that. So that one there. Sweet body, because we created a Boolean common with that one. Now we've created clones. So this is a clone and the same as these. They've all been cloned from the original. So there's a clone inside there and it tells you what clone it is. It's on the body. Because it's on the body, that means that anything underneath that body, so fan body blade, if that original body changes, then everything else changes. For example, if I added a fillet to this, the fillet will be applied to these two. When we added all these to a Boolean, so we used the connection point as the active body and Boolean in the two clones and the original. Then we stopped any edits to that Boolean afterwards without freeing them from the structure. That's clone the fan blade again. So I'm gonna take this fan blade and clone it. So this is fan blade one. So come in here, fan blade one. And I've 
actually call this fan blade. Let's rename that to fan blade. And there we go, fan blade two. So it's almost like I planned this. I've got one, two, and three now, which are the clones. And the one that's just called fan blade is just the original. So these are all clones. What I'm going to do now is I've got the active body as the connection point. And we're going to come in and use the boolean. And let's make sure that the original fan blade is invisible. I'm pressing the spacebar on that. And let's come back to the tasks. Click add body. And we're going to select all of the clones. So I'm adding all of the clones in. Like so, I'm fusing those together. And hit OK. So now we've got inside the boolean all the clones. But we've got our original fan blade up here, the fan blade body. What this means, if I bring that one back, we can get to our blade. Let's just hide this one, press the space bar. Anything I do to this will affect the other blades because this is our original. The clones sit in the hidden connection point. So if I come in and add a fillet upon here, so I'm going to click this edge quick fill it so we need to make this the active body so click on the fan blade right click toggle active body now that's used the fillet so click on that edge and use the fillet let's place the fillet around that edge there so let's fill it at that top edge let's add another edge so click add and we'll add this edge as well and we'll increase this to two and then back to one. So it takes, so we've created the fillet around there, all the way around there by just selecting that edge. Reason why two didn't take up, well, if we had two for one side and two from the other side, it makes four. The width of this is three, so it won't take. So it has to be smaller than the depth of the item that you're filleting. If I hit okay, the fillet has taken. Let's hide the fan blade and bring back the connection point, the fan itself. And we look around and the fillet has taken on all the fan blades, all the clones. So it's showing that anything we do to the original gets reflected in all the clones. This makes our life easier. Even if we take a section out of here with something like a pocket, it will be reflected in each of those blades that have been cloned from the original. So I'm gonna leave that one with you as a quick tip. And an example of using one of our other workflows in this workflow. And you can go back and see that it's in the earlier part of the Learning Free CAD series. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.